I'm Diana Falzone, and this is 4 for 4 Science, where we break down four science topics faster than a genius can solve a Rubik's Cube. Ancient feces has helped scientists unlock the Hannibal mystery. James, how is this similar to the breadcrumb trail Hansel and Greta left behind, but with number two, keeping it classy? <laughs> Who knew the horse manure could basically unlock the secrets of the ancient world? So for thousands of years, historian, historians haven't been totally sure about the route that Hannibal took when he invaded Italy, famously with his elephants. But he also had 15,000 horses and mules with him. Now, these have been the key to identifying the location basically where he passed the Alps. Wow. What happens is there are microbes within horse manure that can survive in soil for thousands of years. And now an international team has basically found sediment beneath a pond that is full of these microbes. Therefore, it looks like that's the spot. Huh. I think it's crazy that this legendary figure, this great general who, you know, they didn't have the technology we have, but he still brought elephants and an army across the Alps, and we find out about it through the humblest of ways, through poop. That was a lovely way to put it. It just goes to show that the real warrior here is in Hannibal. It's gut bacteria. <laughs> I mean, this stuff lasted thousands of years. It's also stuff that we find in our own gut, and it's responsible for a number of different things, ranging from food poisoning to actually protecting us from, you know, immune responses. So, and speaking of immune responses, giving blood is a good Samaritan thing to do, but does it harm your immune system, Sophie? The short answer is no, it doesn't. <laughs> the slightly longer answer is, you know, your blood has antibodies and immune cells in it, and so some people thought, well, if you're losing the blood, maybe you're losing those cells. Right. But researchers have been studying this since the 1980s, and what they found is after giving blood, the numbers of certain immune cells do drop, but they rebound within a few weeks. And if you look at the long-term effects, there's no change in rates of cancer or of longevity in people who give blood versus people who don't. In fact, some people who give blood report a feeling of well-being afterwards. Interesting. Well, I think it's you know one of those few truly altruistic things that we can kind of do around mm -hmm. science and medicine a lot. This, thinking about this has made me realize that I need to go out and give blood again. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to get back on that. But I think it's a great thing, and it's good that we're talking about it, and it's good that kind of we're explaining what it is. And if you need a personal reason to give blood there is also some some benefits to it you get it, your own little checkup when you go get blood so they take your blood pressure they take your temperature check your hemoglobin levels so there's also that added to the altruistic benefit of giving to people in need and I'm wondering if there is a correlation about people reporting more of a well-being because when you give back it feels good Maybe. living in space doesn't conjure luxurious thoughts of four-star hotels but expandable astronaut habitats could pave the way for private space hotels Lauren prayed tell about this. <laughs> right, so SpaceX is sending up a bunch of cargo to the space station this Friday, but the coolest thing is they're sending up this thing called the Beam. It's an expandable habitat that goes up compact, and then when it gets up there, they're going to attach it to the station and inflate it, and the astronauts will be able to go inside. And the benefit of this technology is I can go up light and compact, and then it's, uh, give more overall volume once it's in space. Huh. Yep, we all live in New York or kind of in, <laughs> in this area. We know what space is like, kind of limited space. I think it's a brilliant idea. It does look, to me, a bit like a bouncy castle. Mm -hmm. who, wouldn't awesome. want a, who wouldn't want a bouncy castle in space? <laughs> but no, it's serious science, and I think it's an amazing thing, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see them deploy this over the next few months. The really exciting thing is that if you, we have space tourism and we have tourists going up to orbit, they'll probably be staying in these bouncy castles, these inflatable <laughs> habitats. And if we send colonists to the moon or Mars, it might be convenient to send these habitats with them too. So these could be what we associate with housing in the future, the space age future. That's really crazy and is mind blowing when you think about it, but it's almost like a <laughs> pop-up stand, right? You can just... Anyway, the Sumatran rhino, a critically endangered species, dies weeks after landmark discovery. James, can these rhinos be saved? This is a really sad story. You know, conservationists were celebrating recently when this rare Sumatran rhino was discovered in the Indonesian part of Borneo, in an area where not so long ago they were thought to be extinct. But yes, sadly, you know, we found out this week that it's succumbed to a leg infection. Oh. Now, apparently there's only a hundred of these Sumatran rhinos in the wild, so it really underlines the fragility for a lot of these critically endangered species. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the reasons that rhinos are so endangered is because of humans. We have this myth that rhino horn can, can cure illnesses and has these mystical powers, and so people kill them for the horns. And some conservationists are fighting back by cutting off rhino horns and replacing them with 3D printed ones, Ooh. or with uh, dyeing the horns bright colors so they'll be less desirable.
And it's not just the rhinos that are targeted for these false perceptions. I mean, people think that they, their horns have some kind of medical benefit, mm -hmm. but also sharks and manta rays are killed for their gills that also have this false per perception that it somehow cures diseases. So we need to work on educating people about the problems of this poaching. All right. Knowing is half the battle. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think using the hashtag 444science.